Thank you, Jesus. We do thank God for the light that He shed abroad in your heart. If something has opened up in your spirit, man, give God thanks. If you know you are living here, knowing what to do next and being committed to doing it, give Him praise. Ask him to speak to you in this last segment. Take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you and thank you and thank you. Just one word from you can turn any situation around. Thank you for the many things we have heard and the many things we have seen. Now help us to be privileged to handle them in our respective lives and ministries. Let no ministry here suffer death. Let everything die bounce back to life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. This is a workshop indeed. Do I have a witness in the house? That's God putting tools in our hands to work with. That's you knowing that you are holding tools that will keep the vehicle of that commission in motion. We give God praise. We give God praise. I'm going to hinge on just one thing that I believe will help us to gain speed. It's been mentioned over and again, but I feel pressed by the Holy Spirit to re-emphasize it. We are in the last days. The golden era of the church and the troublesome era of the world. Dominion shall be domiciled in the house of God. All the fountains of life shall be domiciled in church. A great time of trial for the world, but a season of triumph for the church. So we must be conversant with what the glories are and what to take, what it takes to be a partaker of it. Engaging the force of fasting and prayer. For our desired next levels. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6 to 14. Is this not the first that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness? To undo the burdens of stagnation? To bring an end to the oppressions of the enemy? 
and that he break every yoke. Then it talks about the love dimension of it. It is not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou clothe cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. That's the love factor that gives value to our prayer and fasting. You know, faith works by love. And prayer works by faith. Whatever you don't believe in prayer will never come true. And what you believe in prayer will only deliver to the level of your love for God. What you believe in prayer will only be delivered to the level of your love for God. So everything works by love. Then shall thy light break forth out of obscurity. Thy light shall break forth as the morning, and thy head shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Now, that means the altar of prayer and fasting will always lead to to eruption of revelation because the blindfolding power of hell has been destroyed. Prayer and fasting will always culminate in outbreak of revelation. <laughs> Do I have a witness in the house? You just have light breaking forth. It was from the altar of prayer I came to know what was resisting the church from growing and how to keep the church on the path of continuous growth. I didn't read that in any book. There was an outbreak of revelation that brought the church out of stagnation. And we are still celebrating that through today. It was from the altar of prayer and fasting that Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18 broke forth in my life and I screamed, yea, I can never be poor. It was from the altar of prayer I discovered that I had God say to me, thou shall not borrow. October 4, 1981. So I had no privilege of trying it. Outbreak of revelation. And thy health shall spring forth speedily. So it's a covenant health therapy. Keeps you supernaturally fit. As you engage in it according to the word of God. Now he went on and said, verse 9, Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. So it facilitates answers to prayers. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Every time you pray according to the revelation of the truth on any subject, you have committed God's integrity to answer. If you ask anything according to my will, and outbreak of revelation is, is your access to the will of God on the subject matter that is before you. So it facilitates answers to prayers. Verse 10. If thou draw thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness shall be as the known day. Verse 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. We just heard about divine guidance. When God guides and we follow, only goodness and mercy follow us. When God guides and we choose to follow, 
only goodness and mercy are allowed to follow us. From today, evil will not pursue after you anymore. Yeah. Ezra called the people of God and proclaimed a fast to seek the right way for them. And God granted them what they required. Ezra chapter 8, verse 21 to 23. The Lord shall guide thee continually. Which way, Jesus? What steps am I to take? I haven't heard all I've heard. What are you saying for me to do? And you do that on the altar of prayer and fasting, and you are sure of responses. And verse 12. Isaiah 58 and verse 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repair of this, the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. So it's not just about answers to prayers, it's about change of levels. The altar of prayer and fasting provides a platform for assessing our next levels. When we hear that Esau sold his birthright, we feel for him. But you can't tell how much of us are selling our birthright without knowing. The things we ought to have walked into five years ago, we are not there yet. Because in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, in the midnight, as the call crows, every day, we are selling off our glorious destiny without knowing. And then in verse 14, he said, Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. And feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So it changes our levels. Brings us to the high places of the earth. Swimming in our inheritance and redemption. And that's easy. Because I commend you to God. Paul said unto the word of his grace which is able to build you up. And give you inheritance among them which are sanctified. So, prayer and fasting is ordained a covenant platform for assessing our next levels in life. And that includes in our ministries. It's important to know that prayer and fasting is a commandment, not an admonition. Is this not the fasting that I have ordained, prescribed, commanded? Is this not the purpose of which I prescribe fasting and prayers? So it's not about if you fast. It's a when you fast. So it's a when matter. It's not an if matter. When you fast. Matthew 6, verse 17 and 18. But thou, when thou fastest, not if thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the, thy father which is in secret, and thy father which is yet in secret shall reward thee openly. So it's not... Our principle is a commandment. Somebody asked me <laughs> years ago in America, I said, why don't we see the miracles that you see in Africa? I said, you don't do what we do. If we, you do what we do, you will see what we see. One of my sons here had the son missing. They couldn't find him. 
and came and reported to me that this boy went out in the morning and they couldn't find, they couldn't locate him. He called me at 9 o'clock in the evening and I said, your son returns today, not tomorrow. Today. Whatever way he got there, he found his way home, not knowing how he got there. If you do what we do, we were saying miracles from you before. We didn't see it here. But when we decide to do what your forefathers were doing, according to the word of God, it shifted because you stopped. It shifted before you, because you stopped. Fasting and prayer is a platform for change of levels. That scripture clearly defines it. In your life and my life as individuals and in the work of the ministry in our hand. Remember, every commandment of scriptures is ordained for our profiting. Every. If you hearken to my voice, observe to do what I do, I will set on high above all nations of the earth. Let fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Proverbs 14, I mean 4 and verse 13. The word preached to us or preached to them was, didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Hebrews 4 and verse 2. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. Every scriptural commandment is ordained for our profiting. Prayer and fasting inclusive. When thou prayest, when thou fastest, it's ordained to be part and part of our lifestyle in our Christian adventure. How much more then as ministers? We must recognize that we are in the fasting days in the body of Christ. What did I say? Mark chapter 2 and verse 19 and 20. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days come, the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. The bridegroom was taken away. Says, so we have entered the days of fasting. Then shall they fast in those days. We must be sensitive to the times and seasons of life. We are in the days of fasting in the body of Christ. Whatever we move today, we demand prayer and fasting to move. Whatever we change level, we demand prayer and fasting to implement. Luke chapter 5. Or Luke 6, 33 to 35. Luke 5, please, 33 to 35. And he said, they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but die, eat, and drink? And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bridegroom chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then shall they fast in those days. <laughs> we must carry this along. It's a spiritual force that empowers us for change of levels. A great door and effect has been opened unto us, but there are many adversaries. All these revelations just open the doors. But to assess the door, there's a contention. 
there are many adversaries, some of which will never move without prayer and fasting. Why could we not cast that devil out? He said, this one, okay, because I won't believe, but even with your faith, this one will not go without prayer and fasting. Matthew 17 and verse 20 and 21. This kind, and I believe those kinds are mostly the gates of hell resisting the advancement of the church. This kind, this kind, go not out, but by prayer and by fasting. No gate of hell shall succeed to resist your advancement in ministry again. Yeah. Because you now know what to do. We are in the last days. We are in the days of prayer and fasting in the body of Christ. We are in the last day to days of great happiness in the body of Christ. Where my people shall never be ashamed. Where the anointing will be poured out without measure upon God's people. And you know, as much as I do, that the anointing is enhanced by prayer and fasting. The anointing is, my soul tasted for thee, and my flesh longed for thee, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. The anointing, every minister knows that the anointing is enhanced by prayer and fasting. When you are praying the right kind of prayers. No bread and butter prayer. When you are praying kingdom focused, kingdom enlarging, kingdom advancing prayers. The anointing increases. We are in the last days, the days of supernatural church growth. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established upon the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all people shall flow into it. All people. Micah 4, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 2, verse 2 and 3. All people, all people shall flow into it. And see the connection. We are also in the last days, the days of prayer and fasting. <laughs> that means prayer and fasting is a requirement for assessing the realm of supernatural church growth that God has ordained for the last days. All together. Apart from diverse interjections of the Holy Ghost, our church has been on one day weekly prayer every week of the year. Congregation of prayer and fasting. And three days every month, we call it spiritual week of emphasis. I've told them that let's stop doing this for three months. You see the gates of hell come and be restored. They will restore their gates if you don't keep guard against the assessing it. That has become a way of life. It's not something you are planning to do. It's something that is planned itself inside you. And that for life. The new cat will not walk. Every revival rides on the shoulders of men. They built a new car to carry the ark of God. God reacted and knocked down Uzzah. Chapter 13 of First Chronicles and verse 8. David said, we did not act after the due order in First Chronicles chapter 15 that no one ought to bear the ark of God but the priests and the Levites. So he called them and sanctified them and the ark was successfully born and carried to its place of rest. There is no new technology to your next level. 
It's the same old truth that will get you there. Start in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? Where in your father's throne and walk in it? We will not walk in it. When the IT generation, you know what I mean? Uh, we have software for everything, including church growth. There is no software for church growth. There is no software for life growth. There is no software for advancement in life. It makes specific demands on your life and my life. May no one here sell his battery right? to a morsel of meat. May no one here bite his fingers tomorrow that I ate up my destiny in the name of Jesus. This is very important. In the last days, it shall be said, this man was born there. And that man was born there. The Almighty himself will establish her. All my fantasies are in thee, O city of God. Psalm 87, verse 1 to 7. It's a picture of the rise of giants in the last days from the body of Christ. Remember, as the church grows, God changes the status of his people. I will multiply them, they shall not be few, and I will also glorify them, they shall not be mediocre. Giants will start rising in every church as we keep engaging with the demands of church growth, church spread, church expansion, church enlargement in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. The gates of hell shall no longer be able to stand the way of that church. Amen. The way of that ministry is declared open for life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are in the last days, the days of the rise of giants, and saviors shall come upon Mount Zion, who shall judge the month of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord. So as the church begins to grow, giants begin to rise. Every single church under the sound of my voice, you not just only have crowds, God will be raising giants out of the crowd. God will be raising giants out of the crowd. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember? They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that torment to righteousness as the stars forever. They are just busy doing God's things and God is busy raising them up, changing their levels, changing their status. That shall be our experience. We must not allow our belly to run, to ruin our destiny like Esau. We must refuse to let our belly ruin our destiny as Esau. Oh, sorry, like Jacob. He had suffered a 21 year setback. You won't suffer that in your life. 21 whole years out of one's life because of uncontrollable appetite. No one will be a victim. No one will be a victim. No one will be a victim. I came back from one fasting episode before the Lord, and I was out to a meeting. I mean, the power of God was so fresh, so heavy. I couldn't tell how I moved from the front to the back. I was literally floating. 1977, literally floating. I came out of one prayer and fasting time, and the Lord said, go to that church we are preaching there today. And I said, excuse me, where is the pastor? The Lord sent me, I'm preaching here today. He said, the Lord told me somebody is coming here today. Fire. Fire came down from heaven. You know, power is available. It is the cost that scares people. It's the cost that scares people. It's the cost that scares people. You were told a little why, why they accosted this woman in Port Harcourt 
with his baby on her hand, took her to the dungeon of ritual killers, and they were going to take the baby from her out of the compassion of a mother. She took a bag and threw at those devils, and a flyer of Shiloh came out, and I began to speak in tongues right there. They all went down in stupor. They were all down in stupor. She took the knife she saw by her hand, the one who used to slay them, and cut the rope for 17 others. And they all escaped. This fellow said, ah, 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 ah. You hear the voice of a man from a paper? We devil can stare at that. We are in the days of the raw manifestations of the sons of God. I pray you will not miss it to your belly. I pray your belly will not rob you of this. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The time is now. Lift up your right hand, everybody. Receive grace to pay the price. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray by yourself. Pray in the spirit. I receive grace right now. I receive grace right now to pay the price. Tirelessly so, continuously so. To keep the gates of hell. Of my mandate, of my mission. Everybody pray. Take authority over those gates of hell. You shall not stand. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. No devil we ever require more than faith, prayer, and fasting to clear the way. Jesus said this kind, and that's the only kind they refer to. Goeth not out, but by your faith in place, and prayer and fasting forces backing it up. Hmm. There are the threefold cord that cannot be broken. No gate of hell can disregard the authority of faith, prayer, and fasting and clearing the way. Therefore, the siege of stagnation is over in your ministry. Does Siege of stagnation is over in that church. Get seated, please. 
I said to some of the ministers that were out in the lobby behind here, I said, um, okay, I think I said it here. Don't be patient with failure or you never taste success. There can be no motion without a reaction. <laughs> you are, God gave you a child that started with four. That's okay. I had one behind there as a testimony. There were four when they started. They are 1,000 plus now. One of my sons, they are from Portaco, I mean from Calabar. Huh? They started at seven, and now they are 1,000 plus. That's testimony. That's what God wants to give to you. That's the kind you will have. You know every school has its time span. You are doing a first degree, you enter into university at 100 level, maybe you're in social sciences. After four years, you're expected to come out. But if you are still there after eight years, you know, that will be a burden to your father. It will be a burden and concern to your parents. You have gone around that mountain long enough. It's time to clear up. Maybe you are preaching a relevant message. But you don't even know the message you are sent to preach. And I heard. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 6. Isaiah 40 and verse 6. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodness, godliness thereof is as a flower of the, of the field. <laughs> Go and preach. What do I preach? For anybody in ministry who has not had this divine message, get back to God. What are you sending me to preach? Jonah went to Nineveh and preached to it the preaching that God bade him. And in three days, a whole city was turned back to God. I heard the voice say, cry, and I said, what shall I cry? He said, cry saying, whatever I tell you to preach is what will open the door. Please find out and stay with it. It will only back up what he has commanded you to go and preach. Find out. Oh, I'm told to preach the whole Bible. That's not true. He sent me to preach the word of faith and he told me what various dimensions will make faith work and how faith manifests to show that it's working. I've preached one message for four years on the field. We are in a battle against the powers of darkness. And everybody that has eyes can see. People walk and walk and nothing is working. They try and try and nothing is showing. These are all manifestations of the powers of darkness. Resisting your life from having many. But Jesus is the light of the world. When you open the door of your heart to him, he comes in and turns you to a child of light. When you become a child of light, can the devil block the road against you? Can the devil imprison you? Can he head, hold you in captivity? You cannot escape from the touch of the force of darkness until you become a child of light. You don't have to go to school to understand that. You have never seen darkness pursuing after light to arrest it, to stop the way against it, to block access to its future. No. Just become a child of light and darkness will leave you alone. How many want to be saved? You cannot escape if you neglect this great salvation. You die in frustration. You'll be a victim all through life. That's why I came out. God sent me to come and bail you out from the region of darkness into light so you can experience fulfillment in life. 
maximum 12, 15 minutes. Altar call, five minutes. Write your name, two minutes. We're gone. It's clear he gave me that message. And that message is growing in strength every day. I don't quote any scripture. If I say John, he may think he's one living by his house. <laughs> and if it's not a good John, then he has spoiled my message. <laughs> if that John is a concern, then my because he has never seen a Bible in his life. John said, he said, eh. Hey. So he told him. <laughs> Amen. And then simply, now I have bought you a rechargeable touch light and the battery is gone flat. Would you call me to come and charge it for you? They say no. You have to be in church to keep your battery of salvation charged so that your life will not be turned to darkness and the former troubles come back to you. You understand it? Find a living church wherever you find yourself in the world. And don't just go visit, go plug. Ours is only one of those vibrant churches around the world today. Because I'm out for Jesus. And yet they come. The gospel. The gospel of Jesus. If you preach the gospel of judgment, nobody will believe Christ. We were doing that before. We are very happy that they cried and then we left. <laughs> Amen. We are sent to preach the gospel of peace, not of crisis. Wherever house we enter into, first say, peace be unto this house. So the first thing we release is blessing. Peace be unto this house. Two of our members who are out in Abuja, and the entire interview. No, 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 we don't want to see you. He said the Lord bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, please come. Come. <laughs> they gave them clean, clear, dignified audience. That's the gospel of Jesus. Not I bind you. You didn't go there to bind you, you go there to lose them. How beautiful are the feet, feet of them that bear the good tidings that publishes peace. Isaiah 52 verse 7. That say unto Zion, thou shalt be built up. They are just full of the blessings of God in their heart as they go out. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, that thy God reigneth. Just blessing, full of blessing, full of blessing. Romans 15 29, he said, I'm coming to you with the fullness of the blessings of the gospel. The fullness of the blessings of the gospel. As chapter 3, verse 26, where I got that light from, he said, God sent Christ unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus. Sent him to bless you and to sustain the blessing to let you know you must turn from your sin that brought the troubles in the first instance. He sent him to bless us and to sustain the blessing by turning away from our iniquities. Bless, 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 bless. That's the gospel that will bring the world to their knees. That's the good news that will change people's position in life. So we are going out with the gospel of peace, going out with the gospel of blessing, going out with the gospel of healing. We met someone in one of our outreaches recently, and then um, that is June 7th this year. He was sick of diabetes, high blood pressure, and was going for an ECG to check the state of her heart. When he saw us, he alighted from the bus, gave her life to Christ on that ground, proclaimed a blessing on them, went to the hospital he was going to earlier, her own hospital. 
free high blood pressure, free from diabetes, heart situation in shape. The blessing. The blessing got her to alight from the boss. The blessing changed her story. And here was what she said. Myself and all members of the family are permanent members of this church today. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. You don't give good news with frowning faces. Excuse me. Jesus loves you. Say, I don't want. <laughs> you seem to have more problems than I do. <laughs> you don't give good news with long faces. The day you will not be smiling, don't go out. You won't get anything. Every harvest of the feed perishes when joy withers from your heart. You won't get a result. Joel chapter 1 verse 12. But you are giving the good news smiling. He said, what? What? We got three people from one family or from one uh, environment in the old church. The landlord of this man who had challenge, the tenant of his house who had challenge, he said, go to that church. When they come out, I see everybody smiling, everybody bossing. Maybe God will solve your problem. So he came. And in three months, everything turned. So when the second tenant had a problem, he said, look, I told your friend the other time to go to that place and go help them. <laughs> because the man not, not only paid the house rent, he, he, was, he bought a car and was celebrating bad day. Everything turned within three months. So he sent the other one to come. The other one too came and everything turned. Now, the, oh, the landlord is an allergy. You know, an advanced Muslim. He said, I think I will go there also. <laughs> so he came and gave his life to Christ. He's an elder in our church today. <laughs> By the joy of the Lord radiating in the face of people. So don't flog people in church. Give them hope. Give them hope. Don't look down on anybody in church. Tell them they have equal value in the sight of God. All of us are children of the Most High God. Give him hope of tomorrow. And he will come out of the church smiling. Somebody else will be attracted to come. That's the power of joy. If you are not joyful, you cannot be effective on the harvest field. The joy must be radiant. It must be something they can touch, something they can handle. And what more? Your testimony is your strongest message. Say with me, my testimony is my strongest message. My testimony is my strongest message. Lavishly share your testimony of God's goodness in your life and what has happened to you since you met him. Share it lavishly. Share it joyfully. If you don't have a testimony, don't go out. Because if any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things have passed away. All things have, something must have passed away from your life. That used to be part of your life before. It's no longer there. Can I hear your amen? You have seen specific answers to prayers in your life. You share your testimonies lavishly and joyfully. There is nothing confidential about testimonies. So we go along with the message of triumphant living, the message of the gospel of testimonies of other people who have encountered God, the gospel of dominion, the gospel of signs and wonders. That is God's dragnet for the harvest into the house of God. Whatever you want the church to do, take the lead in doing it. As you commit yourself to it, they connect with you. And in no time, everybody's up there running. Remember, every praying church is a growing church. And every growing church must remain a praying church to keep growing. So it's a lifelong task. Also know that no church grows without a people on the go. They go witnessing Jesus. They go offering compelling invitations to church. 
they go advertising the program of the church for the coming Sunday. Somebody has to tell somebody, come and see. We do our part, then it does its supernatural part. Like my son was saying, one day I asked, how many people got to this church without anybody inviting him? A crowd. <laughs> that means without you and me, I will still do what I want to do. But that does not stop us from doing what we should do. Because you have your personal rewards in it. You have your future tied to it. He that received receive wages and gathers fruit unto life eternal. And the multitude of people is the king's honor. You are a part of bringing multitude to the church. You are honoring Jesus. And he that honors me, I will honor. Proverbs 14, 28. And 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. So you have your part in it. And your part guarantees rewards for you. And everyone shall be rewarded according to his own labor. So it's our opportunity. As we do our part, he keeps doing his part. And together, his agenda is delivered. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? There is nothing God ever tells you and me to do that is for his sake. They are all for our sake. They are all for our sake. May you never miss your great rewards in this awesome harvest season. Amen. Hear this. Some churches will experience some eruptions Amen. that will cause them to shed tears of joy. Amen. The pastors will sit down and be shedding tears of joy. Amen. The workers will sit down and be shedding tears of joy. Amen. All to the glory of God. Stand to your feet, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Somebody came from Aqua Ibom on his way to one inside forest looking for an herbalist. Unfortunately, the vehicle dropped him. Unfortunately, the vehicle dropped him at the gate of Canaan land. <laughs> and the thing said he should enter the gate. He entered the gate. As he entered the gate, the phone died. His telephone fully charged. So the herbalist could not reach him. He couldn't read the herbalist. It was a Wednesday. If one good his way to church, gave his life to Christ, he couldn't read the abalist. The abalist couldn't reach him. What he was going to look for the abalist for, right on this ground, his brand new job showed up. <laughs> gave his life to Christ. He's enjoying himself now in the Lord. That's the supernatural dimension of church growth. That's when God steps in. And those are the things we secure as we stand in the place of prayers and said, I believe Jesus, the master builder of the church, is in this place. I believe the Holy Ghost, the Lord of the harvest, is on this ground. I believe God, the multiplier God, is in this place. And he begins to manifest himself in whatever ways he chooses to. Well, the good news is, no church here will suffer the siege of stagnation again. <laughs> Where you are now will be the least you will ever know in your life. Yeah. You are an evangelist. The last crusade you heard will be the last one you ever heard. Yeah. In terms of size. Yeah. Your size will multiply. Yeah. Whole cities will soon begin to gather. Yeah. To receive the gospel from your mouth. Yeah. That applies to men and women. There is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. Between the male and the female. The same Lord over all. The same Lord of our world. There are apostles who are women in the New Testament. There were prophetesses in the New Testament. There were women among the 120 in the upper room who ushered in the Holy Ghost on the earth. So, there is no gender disadvantage. You are called, you are called. Stay in your calling. You are called, you are called. Stay in your calling. Some women are called. The husbands are not called. Yes, God does not have to examine who is who he calls whosoever he wills. Can I hear your amen? amen? And yet, they had enough wisdom to
to get their husband along with peace at home, joy at home, with all the support needed. I pray that your calling will not be lost. Amen. It will not be lost to wandering spirits. Amen. Just going here and there, not knowing where you are going. May you stay focused Amen. till the end of time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May you stay focused Amen. in the end of time. Amen. Till the end of time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May you stay focused Amen. till the end of time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up those two hands, everybody. Celebrate God for the new day that's done upon that church today. Give him glory. Give him praise.